Hello everyone, welcome again to my channel, Math is Fun channel. Again, this channel is an educational channel to help you understand your lessons in mathematics. And this channel is intended to those who are doing the online classes out there and also those who are answering their modules. This will help you understand and build your concept about mathematics or about your lesson in math and it will help you improve your performance in mathematics for today's video discussions we're going to talk about in the mathematics in the modern world so we focus on the problem solving so i hope you'll be able to subscribe my channel and those who are not yet uh, subscribing my channel, please do subscribe. And those who are already subscribing my channel, please share this one to your friends out there so that you will also help them understand your lessons or their lessons rather in mathematics. So I guess you are all ready to listen for our topic for today. So our topic for today, as I have said, we are um, in the midst of, of course, pandemic, but our topic will be focused or will focus on rather in problem solving and reasoning so that you will not be lost we are again in mathematics in the modern world so welcome um welcome to my student uh, i would like to welcome my students in mathematics in the modern world i hope you'll be able to understand the topic that we are going to talk about in this video discussion so to start with of course we have to be guided with the objectives so our topic will be about in problem solving and reasoning we are already in chapter three so for today's objectives in this video discussion we are going to first use the different or expect that we're going to use different types of reasoning to justify statements and arguments made about mathematics and mathematical concepts another we're going to write clear and logical proofs and of course we're going to solve problems involving patterns and recreational problems following the poll yes are you familiar with foil a poll yes four steps in problem solving yes we're going to talk about that one and it's part of our objectives or one of our objectives for this video discussion another thing also of course we're going to organize one's methods and approaches for proving and solving problem so now are you ready so second question second time around that i ask you are you ready yes this time you are all ready so now let's try to start with these key concepts in problem solving and reasoning so let's start to define first what is reasoning what is re reasoning <laughs> rather mathematical reasoning is the critical skill that enables a student to make use of all other mathematical skills so you are using mathematical skills to reason out things mathematically so that's the point here another thing also with the development of mathematical reasoning students recognize that mathematics makes sense and can be understood they learn how to evaluate situations select problem solving strategies draw logical conclusions develop and describe solutions and recognize how those solutions can be applied so in short so uh in making mathematical reasoning you are using your mathematical skills you are using your critical and creative thinking skills in order to defend your answers or your solutions in math okay so that's how uh, how you use the reasoning in a basic mathematical concept another thing also mathematical reasoners are able to reflect on solutions to problems so i will highlight the word reflect of course a while ago evaluate and of course the problem solving strategies and of course making a or drawing a logical conclusion so these are the things that we are doing in reasoning Going back to what I said in the third uh, sentence, mathematical reasoners are able to reflect on solutions to problems and determine whether or not they make sense. So they appreciate the pervasive use and power of reasoning as a part of mathematics. So 
These are the basic concepts in reasoning. Again, in reasoning or in giving reasons, you are using your critical thinking skill, creative thinking skill, even the higher order thinking skill to evaluate set situations, select problem solving strategies, even making or drawing logical conclusions. And of course, to develop and describe solutions and of course, recognizing how those solutions can be applied in a given scenario or situation or problem. So these are the things that we need to remember in reasoning. So I know you are using it already before. You just did not recognize it. Okay, let's proceed. For reasoning in a basic uh, way, of uh, describing reasoning, it is the practice of stating ideas clearly and precisely to arrive at a conclusion. Another, in life, we often make judgment and conclusion based on facts and observations, and these are always true. Yes, very true. And of course, in reasoning, we have to highlight or consider and define the word Conjecture. What is conjecture in the context of mathematics? Conjecture is a conclusion made from observing data. So you are just making conclusion out of what you have just observed or seen. So this is a conjecture. So in mathematics, another um, uh, concept for conjecture in mathematics, it is a conclusion or a proposition I will highlight the word conclusion, yes, and proposition, which is suspected to be true. Again, it's not really that true, but you are, or it is suspected to be true due to preliminary supporting evidence, but for which no proof or disproof has yet been found. So as what, as what the definition for uh, first definition states, it states that it is just a conclusion made from what you have just observed or seen on the data or, an, or on a given or in a given rather in a given situation. So more of it. Let's proceed to the next slide. Conjecture is like an hypothesis to a scientist. Are you familiar with hypothesis in Tagalog that is haka haka? So a conjecture is like an hypothesis. So if we have hypo hypothesis in, in science, we also have conjecture in mathematics. Scientists write hypotheses and test them to see if they are true. So hypothesis or a conjecture is like an assumption that you need to check if it is right or not or true or false. So similarly, in mathematics, as I mentioned again a while ago, a conjecture is just an initial conclusion. So I will highlight the word initial conclusion. I want you to take the note of that, that you form based on what you see and already know, but for which no proof has been found. So again, the basis of making a conclusion in conjecture is based on what you have just seen and what you have just known. So in rare cases, a conjecture may later be found to be invalid. So meaning to say it's not all the time that your conjecture is true. Sometimes it is false. That's why it needs to be validated. So that is a conjecture. So please take the note of that. So let's proceed to the next slide. Let's have an example of conjecture. This is a, a conjecture of Robert. He made this conjecture, an example only. Any number divided by itself is a whole. In short, a whole number. This is what we have known in elementary days. And of course, based on what we have seen it there in the example, 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1. 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. 125 divided by 125 is equal to 1. In short, it's a whole number, correct? Based on what we have seen, that's true. Based on what we have observed, that is true. So meaning to say, a conjecture, it's like it based on what we have seen and what we have observed and what we have known. But it doesn't mean that it's always true. 
Okay? So it is just like a initial, an initial a conclusion as what the definition stated a while ago. So now let's talk about kinds of reasoning. So the first one is intuition. Are you familiar with the word intuition? You already encountered this one in psychology, but in mathematics, we also have intuition. So intuition means it is a similar or it is similar to guessing. Have you tried guessing things? Yeah, I have. I've done that one a lot of times. So it is similar to guessing, intuition. It is also called reasoning by guessing or reasoning by common sense. So based on your common sense or, yeah, your guess is based on your common sense. And that is intuition. That's how we illustrate an e intuition. It is also the ability to acquire knowledge without proof, evidence, or conscious reasoning or without understanding how knowledge was acquired. So this is an or these are, or these, this, these definitions describe about intuition. Again, it is like guessing. It is also um, uh, based on uh, common sense, or your reasoning is based on common sense. And of course, it is uh, an ability to acquire knowledge without proof, evidence, or conscious reasoning. So that's how we define intuition. So another thing also, as I have said, of course, as I recall, Intuition is, a, is similar to guessing. It is called reasoning by guessing or reasoning by common sense. It is the ability to acquire knowledge without proof, evidence, or conscious reasoning or without understanding how knowledge was acquired. So we have an example there on the screen of intuition. The, um, I know you can relate with example. Example of intuition is love at first sight, <laughs> of course. A common sense. You think that you love the person first sight so no one can can um uh what we call that a uh, debunk about that one or against it so that is like um acquiring a knowledge without proof or evidence you just love the person at first sight without basis correct based on your common sense or be, based on what you are guessing on so that's how you do the intuition an example of intuition Another example, after the first meeting in his math class, Ronald says, I think I will like mathematics. So he is just giving a guess. So he's just giving a guess based on his common sense. Maybe he experienced that in the first meeting, math is just too easy. So maybe that's why he made a conclusion or something like um, giving reasons that he loves or, or he thought that mathematics, that he will like math, correct? So that is an, an example, another example of intuition. So I hope you are getting something. The second one, of course, uh, not third, the second, uh, the third one is the inductive reasoning. So for the inductive reasoning, as you can see, we define it based on the screen. We define inductive reasoning as reasoning using observed patterns. So I want you to observe the patterns of course when you do the inductive reasoning so i hope you can follow so inductive reasoning is a reasoning using observed patterns so here are the steps doing the inductive reasoning we have to observe the data find the pattern and of course make a conjecture so again inductive reasoning is using observed patterns so you have to observe, find a pattern, and make a conjecture. And of course, this is the example of an inductive reasoning. As you can see, inductive reasoning is, example, explore 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19. So what you are going to do here, applying the inductive reasoning, of course, you have to observe the data, observe the problem. And as, as you notice, the problem has a pattern. So you are going to find a pattern. What's the pattern? You will just add three to go in the next term or in the next sequence. So we have it. After that, you will be able to find out or make a conjecture that the pattern is based on the given example, 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19. This sequence has a pattern. You will just add three to, get, to proceed to the next term. So that's how you get it. Okay. So that is inductive reasoning. I forgot the other one, the second. 
the first is the intuition. The second is analogy. I forgot to put it in my PowerPoint presentation. I want you to take their note. The second type of uh, reasoning is analogy. Again, the second type of of the second type of reasoning is analogy. When we say analogy, it is a form of reasoning in which other similarities are inferred from a particular similarity between or the, uh, between two or things. It is reasoning by comparison. So I want you to remember or define analogy as a reasoning by comparison. Again, reasoning by comparison. That is analogy, the second type of reasoning. The next is inductive reasoning, as I mentioned a while ago. So example for analogy, let's have an example. I just want you to take the note of that because it's not on the screen. Example of analogy, which is the reasoning by comparison, is tree is to leaf as flower is to petal. Again, tree is to leaf as flower is to petal. Another example, ham hammer is to nail and comb as comb is to hair. So hammer, another example, hammer is to nail or comb is to hair. Next example, finding a good man is like finding a needle in a haystack. Finding a good man is like finding a needle in a haystack. So in short, analogy is just a reasoning by comparison. You are uh, trying to give reason by comparing the given a uh, situation in a certain event or certain thing. So that's how you do analogy. So no question anymore with the analogy followed by inductive reasoning we already discussed the number three now next is the number four the, the fourth uh, type of reasoning is we call it deductive reasoning this is reasoning in which we go from the general to the specific in short again from complex to simple or general to specific that's how you do the reasoning you start with the main or the general concept or reason followed by the specific uh, thing or reasons. So in short, from complex to simple. Let's have an example. It's not clear, but let's. I will just read all, 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 all ostriches. <laughs> all ostriches are birds. That's your first premise or first statement. Carlos is an ostrich. So that's the second statement or uh, or second premise. So now your conclusion based on the deductive reasoning from all ostriches are birds. That's a general term or general reason or first premise. The second reason is Carlos is an ostrich. So it becomes more specific. So in short, you can draw a conclusion after. Carlos is a bird. So that's how you do the deductive reasoning. I'm referring to these examples. So I hope you are guided. So in math or in mathematics, the premises are axioms. Premises are axioms and the conclusions or conclusion rather is a theorem. Do not forget a premise in math is called axiom. The conclusion in math is called theorem. So please do not forget. Therefore, math or mathematics is deductive rather than inductive in nature. Please take down note of that. Mathematics, or based on the, on the argument that we have, mathematics is more deductive than inductive in nature. So I hope you'll be able to remember the concept of deductive reasoning. So now let's have another example of deductive reasoning. So exa uh, example given, we have four times the quantity of this more mathematical, Four times three x to the, to the quantity. Sorry, to the quantity of three x minus eight plus quantity plus five is equal to x minus five. Then you're going to solve the equation for x. Give reason for each step in the process. So using the deductive reasoning, you can solve this one. Of course, apply the distributive property out of the general. This is the problem. General a statement or a reason or problem. We are going to start from the uh, from the uh, general or complex down to specific or simple. 
So we try to solve it. 4 times 3x, that's why we have 12x. 4 times negative 8, that gives us negative 32 plus 5 is equal to x minus 5. Again, we use the distributive property. So this is the first reason. The second reason is uh, you're going to add them, the like terms on, in, uh, on your left side of the equation so you have negative 32 plus 5 that gives you negative 27 just copy 12x and copy x minus 5 again the reason is combine similar terms next is we are going to apply subtraction property of equality how by adding both sides of the equation by um we add uh, both sides of the of the equation we add it to 27 or plus 27 so that gives us this one will be eliminated or we will become zero. That's why we have 11x in here. And the negative 5 plus 27, it's like 27 minus 5, which gives us 22. Then divide both sides by 11 by applying the addition property of equality. So to divide it, both sides, uh, uh, division property of equality, then we can have it x is equal to 2. So this is an example or best example of deductive reasoning in making reasons okay in making reasons in solving mathematics so i hope you'll be able to remember how you make reasons using deductive reasoning this is the best example that you can relate when your teacher will ask you to show your solution remember so you have to give reasons okay so did anna more of deductive reasoning Deductive reasoning is used in formal geometric proofs and often resorted to in proving theorems and corollaries in geometry. So in short, deductive reasoning is uh, is used uh, is commonly used in geometry or in formal geometric proofs. So if you encountered geometry before, you already encountered the deductive reasoning because you are giving a reason. Um, you are giving a formal geometric proofs by giving reasons. What I mean is in in doing the uh, or in proving or doing a formal geometric proofs, then you need a uh, formal reasons or you have to provide reasons. That's what I meant. Okay, so now very familiar with you, the father of geometry, Euclid. So this is Euclid. It's not really his face, perhaps. Euclid is a very mysterious guy in, in the history of mathematics. So... Uh, Euclid is the father of geometry and the first Egyptian mathematician who initiated a new way of thinking the study of geometry and introduced the method of proving a geometrical result by deductive reasoning. In short, it was uh, Euclid who introduced the first uh, method of proving and he applied proving in geometrical a result or in geometry or in the study of geometry using the deductive reasoning it's based upon previously proved result and some self-evident uh, specific assumptions called actions. So we define actions as self-evident specific assumptions. So it's like a self-evident specific assumptions and that is action. So I mentioned a while ago, a premise is called action in mathematics. So it's like uh, very obvious that the, 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 the word itself or the situation itself can already explain the reason. And that is what we call self-evident, that you don't need proofs. It's very obvious. Okay, that is action. So now we have it, the deductive system. So this is how you do the deductive reasoning based on Euclid's way and how he make proof. How he makes proof rather or how he makes um proving first undefined terms okay from the undefined terms of course it evolves into defined terms after the defined terms it becomes postulates and after it becomes postulate then that's the time it will become a theorem so this is how how reasoning uh, how reasoning help develop the concepts of geometry and even the concept of mathematics. So, so Euclid plays a great role in the history of mathematics, especially in the development of, of the concepts that we are studying in mathematics. So the point, so we all know that the undefined terms are the point, line, and plane. From the point, line, and plane, 
it becomes or it defined it becomes a defined terms the terms defined precisely so you have there the example line segment example of the undefined term is the line so this uh, this is the illustration of a line and of course for the defined terms from the line we defined another concept of geometry or the subset of it or part of it which is called line we can also use ray so this is an example so from that we can now draw a postulate or we can already have a postulate based on the defined terms so a postulate is the basic assumption basic assumptions assumption means your assume or hypothesis in geometry like postulates assumed to be true without proof so assumed to be true without proof that is a postulate so example of that from the line we have the line segment and then now we have the two points we can now draw a postulate based on the given uh given undefined term that we have the line two points determine a line okay that's very obvious self-evident so two points there are two points it determines a line and sure it can form a line so you already have a postulate so that's how you do a postulate after that you can make a call a theorem or a conclusion conjectures to, uh, conjectures to be proven deductively and that is a theorem so please uh, take the note of that example of a theorem is from the example that we have we'll just continue the shortest segment from a point not on a line to the line is the perpendicular segment so in short you can already have another or you can build a theorem out of the undefined terms using the deductive reasoning so i hope everybody will be able to understand this a concept of deductive reasoning of Euclid. So now let's proceed to the next. So here is the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning. So I hope you'll be able to remember or distinguish the difference. So let's start with it here with this. From the inductive reasoning, we have one, two, three, four. So from here, we have it one plus two plus three plus four then you can already have 2 times 1 plus 4 then 1 plus 4 is 5 times 2 that gives you 10. so on the other side the deductive reasoning we have to let the numbers be x x plus 1 x plus 2 and x plus 3 that's how we do it so from the general term or equation we have it to draw it we have to draw a statement okay a statement so we're going to add them so x plus x is 2x plus x, 3x plus x, 4x. And then 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. So 4x plus 6. So from the big concept, it becomes shorter one using the deductive reasoning. So I hope you'll be able to remember these examples so that you can apply it in your day-to-day -day life. So now let's proceed to the if-then statement and converses. Again, this is part of the logic our mathematical logic lesson uh, we already um touch some of the statements or some of the terms in here or use in here so we will just uh we will discuss mo uh, more of these in the next chapter perhaps uh, maybe not in the next chapter maybe in the upcoming chapters where we talk about mathematical logic but in this time we are going to just uh, define it in a simple way. So let's start with the conditional statement. Conditional statement is part of the if-then statement in converses where a statement in mathematics that consists of a hypothesis and a conclusion from the word itself, if-then. So if is an hypothesis. It is a hypothesis, and of course, the then there is the conclusion. So these statements are usually written as, as what I've said, if-then statements. So we mentioned the word hypothesis. Hypothesis is an assumption. Hypothesis of a conditional states that the given facts are assumed. As what I've said, assumption, it is assumed, or the facts are assumed as true. So we, in hypothesis, we just assume things as true. This is found in the if part of the conditional statement. So we can 
see the hypothesis in the conditional statement as if the word if that that symbolizes or it represents hypothesis another thing also is the conclusion a conclusion is a dense statement so the conclusion of a conditional states what needs to be proven or established or true this is found in the dense uh, then part of conditional statements so conclusion is something to draw or something inferential or it it is uh symbolizes rather or yeah it is symbolizes by or it is represented rather by a word then in a conditional statement so when you encounter the word if then statement that is a hypothesis or it contains hypothesis and conclusion or an if then statement so when we say converse a converse of a given statement or given conditional statement is formed when the if and then parts are reversed so again converse means you are just having a reverse of your conditional statement you interchange your uh, if statement to then statement and then statement to if statement so that is a converse statement by conditional means a statement that combines a conditional and its converse so in short when we say uh sorry uh when we say by conditional statement 